Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a detailed review of a new PoE switch on the market by MokerLink. We'll look at what a PoE switch is, where you would use one, its features, and if it will meet or beat my long distance testing expectations. As you know, a switch is basically a network splitter. It allows you to take a single network connection and split it into multiple. For example, my router in my basement only has four ports, but I need to plug in a smart TV, an Xbox, a desktop computer, and a wireless access points, and sure, some security cameras. So we use a switch to solve this problem. A PoE switch, or a power over ethernet switch, lets you supply electricity to your network devices over a single network data cable. So this PoE switch can power devices up to 30 watts, including 802.3 AF and AT. To know if a device supports PoE, it'll be written on the device in its manual or on the product specs page online don't attempt to power PoE passive devices with a PoE switch because you could damage the device for example this 24 volt access point needs a special adapter and does not work with a PoE switch non PoE accepting devices such as computers Xboxes and TVs can be plugged into the PoE switch with no issues because the switch will not send electricity to these devices This PoE switch costs about $65 US and MokerLink does carry a few other flavors depending on your need. I'll put a link in the description below where you can check out their switches. The reviews are already pinned at 5 out of 5 which is great to see for this newcomer. So from the start here we have a manual, pretty straightforward. The device is plug and play, no software installs are required. In the little bag we have some hangers, some screws and some rubber feet. Next we have an IEC power cord. It's just like the one that you use to power your PC with. Good to see that there's no power adapter here. And lastly, we have the switch. So let's get those little rubber feet installed right away. Now on the back of the device, we have a grounding terminal. In case you don't have the switch plugged into a power outlet and you have devices connected to the front. Next to it, we have a power input. Let's plug it in and have a listen. Perfect, no sound at all no humming fan. We'll do a heat test in a minute to see if they sacrifice excess of heat for that fan. On the front we have eight ports which support powering PoE devices up to 30 watts each or a total of 120 watts across all eight. These are 10 100 Mbps ports and that's plenty of bandwidth for a 10 megapixel security camera recording at 30 frames per second. Next to that we have two gigabit uplink ports. These are used to connect to other switches, your modem or your router. Next to these we have the SFP port which is also an uplink port used for fiber optics. Next we have a little slider with the labels default and extend. This is a pretty cool feature so let's get it set up. Default mode is where all ports can communicate with each other at top speeds. My Surface Pro plugged into port 1 can communicate with the PoE cameras plugged into ports 2 and 3 as well as any devices connected to an uplink port. It also works in the other direction where the uplink ports can see everything plugged into the PoE link ports. When I change the mode to extend we now have what's called VLAN port isolation across the main PoE ports. Devices plugged into the PoE link ports cannot see each other. If I try to ping devices here I get no response. The uplink ports are unrestricted and can see and be seen by the main 8 ports. Extend mode also introduces a speed drop to 10 Mbps but it bumps up the maximum cable length for the PoE ports from 100 meters or 328 feet to 250 meters 820 feet. That's more than double and sounds too good to be true. Before we start doing distance testing, since there's no internal fan, let's pop the cover off and check some temperatures. After hooking up several cameras and writing footage through my network, the maximum temperature I could obtain was 60.9 degrees Celsius or 142 Fahrenheit. In extend mode with slower network speeds, I couldn't get over 49 degrees Celsius or 120 Fahrenheit. Most of the heat seems to be coming from this little black chip here in the middle. That's not bad since the chipboard is floating in the middle of its protective case and with the cover on five hours later the case only reached a temperature of 30.8 degrees Celsius or 87 Fahrenheit. I'm happy with that.
Let's get into that speed and long distance testing. I connected my Gigabit router to the uplink port. The router is responsible for managing traffic and assigning IP addresses. I'll be testing from my PC to an 802.3 AF camera and an AT camera and my Surface Pro. For the cameras, I'll test various cable lengths using both default and extend modes. I'll be looking at frame rates, bit rates, and any noticeable lag. For the Surface, I'm going to be looking at the same cable lengths and the same modes, but I'm also going to be testing the uplink port. I'll be doing ping tests followed by upload and download speed tests. And the cable that I'll be using is a CAT6 UTP cable with a gauge of 23. It's marked 550 megahertz. It's a high quality cable and I'll add a link to that in the description below. My first set of tests is going to be between my PC and my surface and we'll start off with the 10 meter or 33 foot cable. Default mode is active and my ping is one millisecond. I'm able to hit 74.56 Mbps down and almost 90 up. Remember the max here is 100. If I pop the switch over to extend mode, my speeds are 9.3 and 9.44. Max in extend mode is 10. Now if I take the surface and I plug that into the uplink port, the ping is less than one millisecond and the speeds are much higher. 417 and 561. Perfect. So here are the cable lengths that I tested. From the surface to PC using default mode, here were the results using the standard ports on the switch. I had a nice connection and I actually surpassed the 100 meter or 328 foot maximum supported length by far. In fact, I was able to keep good speeds until I hit more than double that. Once I hit a cable length of 250 meters or 820 feet, the up and down speeds dropped to within 10 Mbps. Once I hit over a thousand feet, I couldn't make a connection. For extended mode between the two computers, I was able to reach a little bit farther by about 100 feet. Once I hit over 1180 feet or 360 meters, my connection was unstable. That's awesome performance, just the same considering the advertised extend distance is 250 meters or 820 feet for this mode. When using the uplink port on the switch between the two PCs, my up and down speeds were much faster until I hit 200 meters or 656 feet. Then my speeds went below 100. I was able to reach 250 meters or 820 feet and then my speeds drop again to 10. I was able to keep a connection right up until the 360 meter mark or 1180 feet. Very impressive. I'll post the results that you see here today on my blog so you can review them on your own time. With the same cable lengths in default mode, let's add some PoE and test security camera frame rates and bit rates and their lag. So using the same 33 foot cable, We'll start off with the 3 megapixel 7 watt camera, almost 25 frames per second, and that's the highest that we're going to see with this camera. The bit rate is just below the max point, around 300 kilobytes per second. And the lag is about a second, which is a great baseline. And again about a second. So let's do the same now in extend mode. Pretty much the same results. When testing the remaining cable lengths in default mode, this dome camera kept strong speeds, surpassing the expected 100 meter or 328 foot mark, all the way up to 250 meters or 820 feet. After that, I still had a connection, but the video was choppy and laggy. With the switch turned over to extend mode, I was able to go much farther. The extend mode feature definitely made a difference and I was able to send data and power all the way up to 335 meters or 1100 feet with less than a second lag. Again, way beyond the advertised 250 meters or 820 feet, which I expected. Fantastic. So let's move on to the higher megapixel and higher watt camera. Using the 10 meter or 33 foot cable, the frame rate is about 25. The bit rate, 653 and about a two second lag, which is pretty normal for this camera. In extend mode, the results are similar. So as I was going through the various cable lengths in default mode, the network connection began to suffer once I hit 229 meters or 750 feet. Then when I switched it over to extend mode, again, I was able to push power and data all the way up to 360 meters or 1180 feet. This is a really cool feature. So in conclusion, the PoE switch performed way beyond its advertised expectations, blowing the maximum cable distances out of the water, all 
all while maintaining top speeds for a $65 US. MokerLink is really up there competing with the big network brand names. I love that there's no clunky power supply, no humming fan, and of course the extend mode with isolation. I've been using this switch now for the past couple of months as you may have seen in some other videos. No issues whatsoever. I'm quite happy with it. Do check out my blog where I posted all of the speed and distance results so you can get a better look. Thanks for letting me share my experience with you on this switch. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up or leave me a comment and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.